We've all been there. In training, we play or perform like an absolute beast. We bang in screamers, make every shot, or effortlessly glide through whatever skill drills we're working on. And then come game day, we shit ourselves. That super confident self we are in training disappears. We panic and become filled with fear. We start making mistakes and just fall flat on our face. Fear is a powerful and crippling emotion that can hold us back in our game, but it doesn't have to be that way. So let's unpick fear and chat through some super practical tips to help you become the fearless athlete that you want to be. Well, fear is an emotion that actually has the potential to either help or hinder athletes in their performance. While some athletes may use fear as a motivator to perform better, unfortunately for many others, fear can be a major obstacle that holds them back from achieving their full potential. This fear can also be labeled performance anxiety and can show itself in various ways, including increased heart rate, trembling, feeling sick, and spiraling negative thoughts. When it comes down to it, the main reason I think athletes play with fear is because of the fear of failure. In a game or match, you're often under tremendous pressure to succeed, and the fear of not living up to expectations or achieving your goals can be overwhelming. That's why you may dominate in training and feel super confident there, because there's not anywhere near the same level of pressure. But come game day, the heat is on. Your performance matters a lot more. And so it's natural to feel a little bit more agitated and fearful of not possibly getting the result you're looking for. But this fear of failure often just leads to a lack of confidence, which in turn can cause you to play it safe and be worried more about not making mistakes. This is bad in team sports where you run the risk of just becoming a passenger, not really having an impact on the game. Or in its most extreme form can just cause you to choke in big moments. You get too preoccupied with the result and don't always focus on the here and now of the movement or the skill that you're trying to perform in that moment. And since you're not concentrating just on the task at hand, that's when failure does become a reality, unfortunately. Aside from the fear of failure, another huge factor is the fear of the unknown. When you're encountering something unfamiliar, you're naturally going to be a little bit more edge, and your body's going to enter that fight-flight mode. When you're facing a new opponent, or performing in a new environment, or even at a higher level, which can lead to anxiety and uncertainty. We saw this with Emma Raducanu, who burst onto the scene at Wimbledon in 2021, and had to retire in the fourth round due to breathing difficulties. The scale of the event was so foreign and alien to her, the fear of the unknown really took over. And that's perfectly normal, particularly when you're young and inexperienced. Getting thrown into a new environment is going to cause a bit of panic, and the reason for that is because you've got nothing predictable to fall back on. This is why pretty much every team has a much better home record than away record. Playing at home is super familiar, not just the ground or venue, but going through the same routine of waking up in your own bed rather than a hotel, or leaving at the same time instead of much earlier. As humans, we crave the familiar, and so when something is even remotely unfamiliar, that's when a little bit of fear can start creeping in. And the last main reason we can play with fear is often down to the fear of criticism and judgment through the likes of coaches, teammates, or even fans. Athletes can easily end up worrying about what others will think of them if they make a mistake or fail to perform well, which can lead to a lack of confidence and self-doubt. Again, this can lead you to just playing it way too safe, and a preoccupation with not making a mistake often leads to a less than impressive performance. A great example of this is Russell Westbrook, who was constantly getting criticized when playing for the Lakers, and he was getting eaten up by a lot of fear of being judged negatively on a nightly basis. He then traded to the Clippers and started playing insane again, showing perhaps his best form in the past five years of his career. And that was because he just felt accepted and no external pressure from anyone else. He could just focus on his game. So if we now know what causes this fear through the fear of failure, the fear of the unknown, and fear of criticism, how do we overcome this so that we can start playing without fear? Well, here's five super practical tips you can start implementing in your game. So number one is having a pre-performance routine. All this is is a sequence of actions that you perform before a game or event. More than anything, what it creates for you is a better sense of control over the situation because often we feel fear when we're not in control. And of course, there's a lot of stuff you can't control. So what a lot of athletes will do is just focus on controlling the controllables. And a consistent pre-performance routine is one of the simplest ways of gaining that feeling of control. So it may be a set warm up, listening to a set playlist, putting on your kit in a certain order, or maybe a certain action you do when stepping out onto the court pitch or track. All of the top pros have these, and that's because they also naturally feel a bit fearful of big performances. So having that routine to just gear yourself up and help you lock in just really helps with extinguishing that fear. And number two is to focus on small wins. So if you're feeling that fear or panic, the actual event itself can seem pretty overwhelming. So it's far better to break it down into smaller steps that would lead to a good performance. So if you're a football player, it might just be setting the immediate term small goal of making your next three passes or making sure you stop your man the next time they try to dribble past you. This quickly builds that in-game confidence so that after a few minutes, you feel you've eased into things and feel again like you're in control and able to exert your influence on the game or just get into a good rhythm to showcase your talents and skills. Those small steps are the route to playing with optimal confidence. And with every one you make, you step further away from fear. And then number three is to have a fearless mantra. This is just a simple phrase you can utter yourself to calm yourself down and make you feel the level of confidence needed to perform to the best of your ability. It can be something as simple as, I've got this. The main thing is that you have to believe it, even if it is something that seems a little bit delusional. So I recently used this myself in a running race and the race was 13 kilometers long, which is quite a weird distance for a race. Normally I only have a race of 10K or 21K half marathons. 
So this was just a pretty weird distance to run, which meant that my pacing was pretty off. I didn't really know how to run this properly. So by around the nine kilometer mark, I was actually struggling quite a bit. I'd gone maybe a bit too sort of fast and I just had this fear that I was actually just gonna blow up and not be able to push through for the last few kilometers to actually finish pretty strong. But for some reason, when I was really struggling, I just started saying to myself, I'm Kipchoge for a good minute or two. And in doing this, I visualized myself as in bombing forward when he broke the world record for the marathon in Berlin. And suddenly my stride started opening up again. And I just felt super confident that I could finish the race strong. And doing this just made me feel fearless. Those three simple words were literally a lie, but it was more about channeling the energy and spirit of someone who shows no fear. So just play around with this and develop something similar for yourself in your sport. And number four is a really important one because that fear and panic can actually come out of nowhere sometimes where we make a mistake or something just doesn't go according to plan during a performance. Those moments like giving away possession, your opponent scores or missing your open goal can end up just causing a complete mental collapse. So to stop that from happening, you need to use a reset button. Now, what this is, is any action you can use to condition yourself to make a complete fresh start and have a complete mental reset in the moment. So a classic one could be wearing an elastic band on your wrist and snapping it to literally snap you back to reality. Obviously in some sports, you wouldn't be allowed to wear an elastic band. It might be classed as jewelry. So instead you could wear a sweatband and change it from one wrist to the other. Or it could even be untying and then retying your shoelaces. And the idea is that in doing this, you use it as a symbolic act to create a mental shift and just start a clean slate. You move on from the disappointment and just retune your focus to the present moment and getting back to playing or performing well. And then lastly, number five is just about engaging in acceptance attitudes. So this involves just accepting the situation as it is and not trying to fight or change it. There's no point in dwelling on mistakes or errors because they've happened, it's done. Or just accepting that your body feels different and a bit more agitated because the situation you're in is an important one. And you should embrace those feelings to channel them into more productive energy. I've said before in other videos that feeling anxious or panicked is often the same physiologically as feeling excited. So you should accept those feelings and rethink those as fuel. That extra nervous energy is energy and you can control how to use it to your advantage. Feeling a little bit of fear is fine. It shows you care, that you're taking the moment seriously and that your mind and body is preparing you to tackle the challenge before you head on. The more you fight these feelings, the worse they become and they can actually get to a point where they are really crippling to your performance. Instead, just accept them and realize they're all part of the process of putting in a peak performance. So which tip are you gonna use first? Let me know in the comments below and check out this next video here to find out how to become a more confident athlete.